Jarvis, give me the name of Jesus lifted high. Come on, switch up a little bit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I heard a message by Sarah Vicks Roberts this morning says, stay in your lane. Amen. And you know what? We want to keep, keep the name of Jesus on our lips. Amen. We don't want to talk very defeat, uh, less lack. Amen. But we want to keep the name of Jesus on our lips. And what does he represent? Increase. More healing, blessing, amen. So we are going to speak the name of Jesus. Give it to the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, come on, Hallelujah.
numbers that increase. Hallelujah. Amen, amen, amen. I remain standing and Minister Kenya will come to us with our vision confession for 2024. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. I've heard someone say, if we never say it, we'll never see it. Amen. Amen. So we're just going to talk our way on in the increase. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Just talk your way on over into increase. We believe. Therefore, we speak. Hallelujah. Do we have that corporate confession? Because what we're going to do is, I, this time I want us to say it all together so we don't get lost <laughs> repeating after me. We want to say it all together on the count of three. One, two, three. 2024 is a year of increase. The Lord will increase us and our children more and more according to Psalms 115, verse 14. As it is written, one plants and one waters, but God gives the increase. We commit every area of our lives to growth, expansion, and greatness in the name of Jesus. We shall increase in greatness and be comforted on every side. Psalm 71, verse 23. We receive grace for enlargement, for we shall break forth on the right hand and on the left, according to Isaiah 54, verses 2 and 3. Father, we thank you that our hunger and thirst for the word are increasing. Our faith in how you love us in Christ is increasing. Therefore, we always have victory and we overcome the world. 1 John 5 verse 4. Our love for you, for one another, and mankind is increasing. We decree that we walk in ever-increasing measures of your wisdom and favor. Luke 2, verse 52. We speak increase in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. The glory be to God. So every Sunday we're going to be declaring this corporate confession. Amen. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. God said he would do it. Amen. He's going to do what he's famous for. Amen. What is he famous for in your life? What is he famous for doing in your life? Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
Then we're going to have the corporate prayer ministry by Sister Uzi. And then we're going to have the Spring Valley Outreach Ministry and Book Fellowship by Minister Kenyon. And then we're going to end it with First Lady doing the ministry of hell. So y'all give all that a hand praise. So when Brother Charles get done, y'all come accordingly. All right. Now, what I want to say is this. We had an awesome year of last year with the youth and with the men. Now, the youth, we're going we gonna to piggyback. We're going to do a lot of things, bro. Let's talk about some of the things we did uh, last year. Last year, the, the kids was very active in the Word. And so what we're going to do in 2024 is to increase. Okay, so we're going to increase that. We're going to get further and further in the Word. Now, uh, parents, I, I need your help. We need your help. Okay? I need you to encourage the kids to continue to, to volunteer. All right, we will have the sign-up sheets. Uh, the kids got, uh, uh, our main point of contact is going to be grouping. That's not only for the youth, but it's going to be for the men as well. Okay, all right. Now, with that being said, the, uh, some of the kids, they had, um, uh, they said, they 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 created Brother Charles a, 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 a Snapchat. Okay, now, that with that, you know, that, uh, I communicate with them on that as well, okay? Now, I, I, I don't know anything about them Snapchat, but I do know how to copy and paste, and I paste it on their thing. So if the kids don't have a grouping, then the ones that have set up that Snapchat, then they get that Snapchat, okay? All right, now, not only is that, I put their scriptures on there, and also, occasionally, I put a prayer or a scripture or some kind of encouragement on there as well. Okay, now last year also, we went on a, a, a youth trip. Come on, y'all praise the Lord for that youth trip. And I want to I thank the, the church, the leadership, and the, the ministry, and also I want to thank the members that had a partner and sowed a seed for other kids to go that did not have the financial means to go. So give them a hand, praise. Now, we went, we went down there to Myrtle Beach, and uh, we was down there for a whole week. A whole week. So, what we said, we're going to increase, so we're going to try to do something. I don't know if we're going to go to uh, Myrtle Beach, but we're going to go somewhere similar. I've already been asking the youth to be able to send these suggestions on what they would like to do so we could be able to increase that even more. But like I said, we're going to increase in the Word. All right, now when, when we ask the kids to come up here, we, we, we try to teach them how to stand and try to be able to uh, be able to do with us, save the Lord, to be able to exalt upon the Lord. Okay, now as far as the men's department, we're going to increase that even more. Brother Harry, Brother Harry, raise your hand. Brother Harry, the Lord has laid an aggressive agenda on, in his heart concerning Spring Valley. And what we're doing as men, we're going to partner with that. Huh? Are we going to partner with that? All right, we're going to partner with that. He, you know, he was uh, laying, uh, telling me some of the things. Also, he had talked to the pastor about it as well. And so we're going we to help uh, Brother Harry, and we're going to continue to sow into uh, Spring Valley. Okay? Now, uh, uh, if we didn't do as much as we did last year, let's, let's increase our faith in more the more. Okay? In 2024. Okay? Now, with that being said, I, I, I just want to wanna thank everybody, all the people that has helped pertaining to the youth. I mean, you know, because the thing about this, our desire here in the Bud of Life is to sow into the young people. Okay? Now, the, our desire is to do that. Now, parents, we have to, we ask you to do your part. Okay? All right? And so, pastors say, don't expect what you don't teach. Okay, so we got to teach it at home, and then we're going to expound on that when they come to church. Okay? Okay. So we, we want to continue to do that. But my, my main thing is, is I, you know, I, I thank everyone, everyone, I thank the church leadership, I thank the uh, pastor, first lady, for y'all visit, and for y'all being sensitive to the voice of the Lord and allowing us as young people to be able to exalt upon the Lord. Okay? All right. Now, with that, uh, now I'm going to uh, finish out. But the main thing about it is I want, I, I want the young people, I want y'all to continue to thirst after the Lord. Continue to pour into it because I tell you what, I mean, the, the, the enemy ain't playing. But so what we're going to do is this, and above the line, 
We're going to teach so we can expect. Amen. Okay? All right? Now, with that being said, we're going to finish out with uh, next coming up is uh, Sister Brittany with the Children's Ministry and the Academy. Come on, y'all give her a hand praise. Amen. Praise the Lord. And so uh, we have the Children's Ministry and the Academy. And I first just wanted to say in connection to the Children's Ministry, it's been such a blessing. Um, I'm able to come in here as my daughter is in the back and uh, being ministered to, uh, being attended to. And I thank God for all of the teachers that come in the back and consistently sow their time to spend time with the children. Uh, teaching them the word. I had a video I was looking at where my daughter, she's saying Jesus. And when we, every time that we pray, she's saying amen. Or if I say in Jesus' name, she's automatically coming off the back saying amen. And then I have others that when I get in there, Sister Brittany, what is the lesson going to be? Sister Brittany, and this is in the nursery. And then I see how eager, um, just recently, how um, even the youth, and they come in and they're growing up to be able to serve and to attend to the children, even if we're somewhere else serving. And so I want to thank God for that and offer up this time that if you would like to serve, even if it's just for one, one day, um, come in the back and assist. You can sign up. And also, even in the youth as well, as uh, Mr. McCray has mentioned, but if you would like to serve, definitely come and get with us because that always allows us to be somewhere else to be able to offer up our time unto the Lord. And then also with the academy, I'm just so excited uh, in connection to the academy because this has been something that's just been building towerly with each and every year. And this year, we actually, and I know you may have said it, Kirby we say it several times, but I'm going to mention it again that we got our 501c3 status, our tax exemption status. Amen. And we also got our certification to also to receive and to do business, a charitable business in the state of Tennessee. So God is aligning up everything. And not only just in the spirit realm where we were staying faithful and visionaries and continue to build, but now it's coming in the natural. So we have the paperwork that backs us. And so I just give God glory for that. And we're also, we have an aggressive campaign, you all, because as we're talking about this is our time of increase, we're increasing more and more, and we're believing for greater things now. And so our next, uh, our agenda is for our new facility for the students. We are growing, it's getting tighter. I, right before um, this past Friday, we had our teacher in service, and I got a text about 20 minutes until I was getting ready, before I was getting ready to leave, and it was a parent. And they said, um, are you enrolling? And will you be able to accept them on Monday? And I was just like, you know, but I had to, I said, well, let's sit down and talk. And when we spoke, um, it was just the need of that my child is in the classroom and they're there, but they're really not there and they're not used to that. And I need a place where they're going to be, uh, you know, where they can be called on, where they can be, because if I'm at work, I need a place to know that he's doing okay, and he's doing, you know, that he's thriving, and not just, I was quiet most of the days, and when I do talk, I'm hearing people talk like this, or I'm hearing people talk like that. And so we got to talk, and um, I told her one of the things was, I said, well, let's I want you to pray about it because I described to her what the vision and the mission of the school was. And she came back and she texted me back and she said, I'm going to talk to my son because I don't want to make a split decision, but I know that we'll be there for the next upcoming enrollment. But uh, she said, will you give me that time? And I told her to allow the Lord to lead you. But as she said that, she said, I'm just so thankful to know that there is a school that I've been believing for that is somewhere, something like where I want to send my, my, my child. And so that really blessed me because the Lord is opening up doors. He has been answering prayers for people that, and we're just carrying out the vision. 
we're carrying out what the Lord is saying, but he's calling for people. And he's aligning certain people up, whether it may be for a certain season or it may be for something specific that they need to come to the academy. But we know that it is for us to bring them closer to the Lord, for them to receive something like never before. So I just ask you all, and I know I say this before, but i got to keep you aware of what, what's going on. And we have a... a Excuse me, we have an initiative that is going, it's a campaign, and we're believing for $100,000. And I'm not saying for you all to do that here, but what I am saying is think about where to take this. Think about where to plug this in. Now there's no excuse to say, well, we don't have that tax exemption, we can only give this amount. No, this takes the limit off of that. And so you can now give this to your, um, you know, you can give this to your boss. You can talk about it corporately. I had someone look us up in this system called Edison. And they said, oh, oh, wait, wait, okay, we see you. And so that just blessed me when you can pull us up on the state of Tennessee and you can actually look to see our name there. This is not us. This is God doing the work. And as we're continuing to do what he's called for us to do, he's continuing to open up doors. But we would love your help. And so if you have a child that is K-5 through 12th grade, we would love to see them. If you are thinking about transitioning for schools and you're thinking about enrolling your child where they can receive the word and be built up in honor and authority and responsibility, you definitely want to come see us. Or even if you want to uh, participate, because each and every one of you is members, you all are assisting with the academy you're helping to raise a school you're helping to continue this vision out every time you sow every time you give you're investing in the kingdom as well so i just want to share that with you we're excited about what the lord is doing and definitely partner with us because there's one thing that i know but i'm confident in christ in this is that whatever that he has called whatever that he has called for us to do to instill him in the lives of those children it is being done or it has been done and i know that to be so amen and so i'm gonna um bring up sister luana from the women's ministry amen, amen. amen. praise the lord everyone in our ministry women of liberty amen we thank god Amen. For this ministry, um, on last year we only had a few events, but believe in God for increase this year and more um, opportunities. Amen. So that God can increase us. Amen. And our purpose, and our purpose is to support the women in this ministry through our endeavors as women of God, as wives, as mothers, and as sisters in Christ. Amen. And so we want to continue to go forth in that vision and in that purpose. And as always, um, for, since I've um, been over the ministry, I'm always grateful and thankful for how the women are hands on. Amen. E even though we didn't get to come together a whole lot, I'm always grateful and thankful that whatever the ministry is doing, the women are there. They are willing, they are working, and we support, amen, the vision and mi mission of Abundant Life. And so again, we're looking forward to increased opportunities to connect in this year. Um, and as a matter of fact, toward the end of this month, um, January the 26th, we will be having our annual vision boards and books. Amen. And please stay tuned for further details. We have the location and the time together for you. But it has been approved for Saturday, January the 26th. That will be our opening event for this year. And then I also like to encourage you, please consider coming on board and helping us out. Um, it's only a few of us. And my encouragement with that is Proverbs chapter 15, verse 22. And this says, without counsel, purposes are disappointed, but in the multitude of counselors, they are established. So if you are looking to do something in the ministry and you want to help out with women's ministry, amen, come on and help us establish ourselves as women of God, as wives, as mothers, and as sisters in Christ. All you have to do is come and see me. All right, God bless you.
Amen. And so next we'll have Minister Greta who will be and then give the highlights for the praise team and me. Amen. 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 Well, with the praise team and band, I would like to publicly, I've always told them in our text, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for how you show up every service, every time. And this is the first time in my time being in Abundant Life that I've been able to be away as much as I have been. So I just kind of a blessing to, to know that I have somebody standing in my stead. And I remember pastors always say, you gotta have two, three, four deep. I'm like, pastor, I'm doing good with just the one, you know. But that was years past. But I used to try to say, come on, just sing one song. I said, just sing the one you know, lead the one you know. But I've, I've been pulling on people for years. But I thank God for Sister Luana and her um, steadfastness and her faithfulness um, for standing in for me. And that allowed me to go minister to my, you know, my family. So, and that was a blessing to me. That took that burden off, you know. So I just want to say thank you again. I know I said a lot in the text, but I just want to say thank you publicly. And I mentioned Jarvis this morning. Jarvis travels from Nashville. And I think he's been doing almost two years now. I think it's been, yeah, a little, almost two, probably two years this July, I think. But Jarvis has been going back and forth, so we thank God for them. Um, just want to say briefly again that if you're interested, if you feel like you have a, not just interested, have a calling, okay? Have a calling to be a part of the praise team and band. Um, I think at the tape, at the end of service, at the end of services, there will be tables set up um, to sign up for the various departments. So if you feel that you've been called to the praise team and band, please sign up. Amen. You know, we really would love to have you. Amen. Um, sometimes I think when, um, I think I'll use Miss Kenny when she started, she said, I don't know what I sing. Do I sing soprano? Do I sing alto? I said, get in where you fit in. You know, some parts of you maybe can sing soprano on one part and alto on another part. But the thing that I do stress is love and unity. Amen. Love and unity is the backbone of any ministry. Amen. Because you can have people knowing how to do the things, but if you don't do it out of love, then it's all in vain. Amen. So, you know, we pull on that and, you know, we've been under attack, the attacks come, but, you know, we stay in prayer and we say, Lord, we're going to do this because we've been called to do it. And, you know, we're just going to fight out, fight this thing to the end. And you know what? We always win. We always win. Amen. We always win. So, um, you know, again, thank you all for being a part of this awesome ministry. I mean, it's a ministry you should not take for granted. It's a ministry that sets the tone for the for the service, amen? You know, I think a lot of times, I, I will use myself for example in the past, you know, it seemed like things would just come before you on Sunday mornings or Thursday nights when we had service, and I had to fight that thing because I had to come before the people and usher them into the presence of the Lord, and I can't do that being heavy, you know, being burdened down with what I'm going through. So I learned to put that stuff aside and make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Amen. So again, if you're interested or you feel that you're led to uh, be a part of the praise team and band, please um, stop by at the table at the end of service and sign up. I think we have signers for every department. Amen. So let's continue to give God prayer. Keep our praise team and band in prayer. Amen. Keep them in prayer. We need your prayers. And as we pray, you all pray for us. We always pray for our congregation. Everyone who's coming to hear the service, especially our pastor and first lady. Amen. Amen. All right. With that being said, I'm going to welcome up from our media ministry, Sister Marlo and Minister Don. Let's show them some love. Amen. 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 Well, we also would like to thank everyone that's a part of our media ministry. Um, I would like to say, um, Minister Don, last year we joined hands to pray. And one of the things, like Minister Greta said, being called, one of the things um, Minister Don, um, she prayed that God would send those who had a willing heart and those that, you know, wanted to serve the Lord, and that's exactly what we've seen. So we had um, minister, well, we had Brother Dennis, we had Dr. Uzi already, you know, um, setting 
that example. And now we have Brother Harry, we have Brother Joseph, we have so many of our young people, um, um, Brother um, Joshua. And we have also, um, well, let me just go on to say that the, the media ministry, we collaborate with all the ministries because the media ministry for last year of 2023 um, paved the way and gave us the opportunity to go outside of these walls of the church and be able to connect with people in other states, other countries, and other regions. And that was um, for hooking up and, and being connected. The media ministry um, also, our objective is the vision of the house, and that is to help people hear and receive and discover what they're called to do. So we also, you know, um, if you're willing and obedient, you know, Isaiah 119, if you're willing and obedient, you'll eat the fruit of the land. And so all we ask is if you have a willing heart and you would like to join this ministry, Minister Donna, I'll tell you um, really quickly, when I came um, back to the ministry, I had served in other areas, but she put me to work with just one task. And so as being faithful with that one task of scheduling and letting people know, um, you know, when it was time for them to, um, you know, to either be a greeter or to be an announcer or to be on the sound or on the camera, um, just being faithful with that, then the Lord, you know, showed me other avenues. And so I want to encourage you, if you have the heart to just serve the Lord, you are needed. If you're here, we need you. You just come see us and we'll put you to work and be a part of the media ministry. We also have some that's not here, like um, we had um, Brother um, Wesley come and he just had a heart to want to serve and do everything. And so God afforded him the opportunity to go back to school. And so he's in school now with the sound engineer. And so we just wanna um, let you know about media. Media is needed all over the world, but for the ministry, our work is to help people hear and receive because there are those that join the um, broadcast and they, they, they may not be learned or taught of the Lord. They may not be saved. They may be connecting and watching a broadcast so that they can receive a miracle or to get deliverance. And it is because of um, our broadcast and being a part of the media team, you're making that happen for others. So you're planting seeds in other people's lives. So we need you and we ask for you to sign up and be a part of the media ministry. And I just want to ditto off of Sister Marlowe to everyone that served on the media ministry in 2023. We thank you. God bless you all. And we're going to have a corporate prayer ministry by Sister Dr. Lucy. Hallelujah. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Amen. Um, so I'm um, going to talk about the corporate prayer ministry. This is a ministry that has been better from the vision from our man of God. Um, we have been on this, um, we have been here for since 2017, praise the Lord. And um, I, I and Sister Brittany have been over this uh, ministry about corporate prayer. I just want to read um, 2 Timothy 2 verse 15 says, study to show yourself a workman that needed not to be ashamed, but rightly dividing the word of truth. Hallelujah. So through the corporate um, prayer ministry, what we do is that we study the word of God. We read the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. Every Monday through Friday from 6 a.m. Hallelujah. And there have been some people that have been consistent since we started since 2017. Hallelujah. I just want to say thank you to those that, that have been consistent. I want to say thank you to Sister Shalisa because she has been one person that has 
said all the announcements, all through since 2017 to date. She has never failed any day. And I also want to say thank you to Sister Brittany that it's, um, we do this together, we alternate the beats, and we're consistent every day. We are always on that call. We are always there. Even when we don't feel like we are there. There are times Sister Brittany is driving and she's reading the scriptures. <laughs> Hallelujah. I don't know how she does it, but she does it. She's reading and she's saying, um, uh, let me just pack. Yeah, I was like, how did she do that? Praise the Lord. So I just want to say thank you to Sister Brittany for that, for always being consistent. Hallelujah. Thank you for all those who have been consistent. Praise the Lord. Especially because we have to, we always read the word of God. When we read the word of God, we explain the word of God. And what it does to us is that because we do it very early in the morning, it helps us all through the day. Praise the Lord. It helps us all through the day. It makes us to be aware of who we are. Praise the Lord. And this year, Pastor has been to us that this is our year of increase. Hallelujah. And how are we going to increase? We are not just going to increase because he said so. We are going to increase because we are giving ourselves to the word of God. And how can we give ourselves to the word of God if we participate in the daily corporate prayers? Praise the Lord. I just want to take us back to the book of Samuel, First Samuel, talking about David and the Philistines. Praise the Lord. David when he went to the camp, the word of God says he wasn't supposed to be there, but he went there to give them something. But as he was giving his brother something, he heard what Goliath was saying. He saw that he was speaking wrongly about God. And then the word of God that he has stored in his heart arose. Praise the Lord. So if David was not studying God's word, if David was not staying in the will of the Father, even when he heard those things, nothing would have arose in him. So in this year of increase, we have to allow the word of God be in us. We have to allow that so that when we come to that place of war, that wilderness, that place of empty, that word that is inside of us will come out and will become victorious. Hallelujah. That was what happened to David. When David heard what Goliath, the word of God says, they have wrote something in him. And he went against Goliath. He was a small man. Nobody could go against Goliath. But the word of God says, he just took a stone and his, and his, and his sling. And that was it. The mighty Goliath came down flat. Yes. So, the word of God is very, very important for us as children of God. So, I'm standing here to encourage each one of us. Let us take it as a duty this year, 2024. Yes, pastor would have said it is a year of increase. It will increase you more and more. It will not work. It will work for you. If you don't put the word of God inside of you. And so we have been given an opportunity where we can put the word of God inside of us. And that is through corporate prayer. In the morning, 6 a.m., wake up, get on the line, hear the word of God. It will help you. It has helped me. I am more patient than before. My mom can testify to you. I am more patient. I'm very, I'm, I, before I used to be an, an impatient person. Minister Kenny, I will tell you, I'm very impatient. But 2023, I became very patient. There were so many things that I look at like, so I, why? Because of the word of God. I must tell you that. So when you get on the line, you might be busy. You might be like trying to get ready for work. But just listen. There must be one word. The word of God says there is one word will change your life forever. One word will change your day forever. Because you may just be hurrying to work and there is this angry driver coming. Instead of you uh, stopping and getting upset, you just say, God bless you. And you're on your way. And that makes 
makes your day better. Because all through that day, you will not be angry. But if you did not hear that word that morning, you will be angry because of that man, and that will spoil your whole day. Hallelujah. So I encourage you, let us get on the line. 6 a.m. Even if you have to mute your phone, um, and mute your phone and do, go about your normal business, but ensure that you are there. Hallelujah. Then the second thing about it is prayer. Amen. Look at um, 18 verse 1. The word of God says, men ought to pray and not to faint. God expects us to pray because he's ready to answer us. So in this corporate prayer, there's also a component of prayer added to it. Because when you pray, you are better equipped. Praise the Lord. The promises of God is in two folds. What is it? The promises of God is one, is futuristic. There's something you are praying for a future. Praise the Lord. And the second thing is that you are confessing it now. So, promise of God is now and is futuristic. So, when we come together to pray, something moves. Something happens. So, I just want to encourage us in this year of increase, for us to receive that increase in our lives, for us to be able to increase growth, in our lives, we have to pray. Because a man that does not pray, a man that does not pray, is in trouble. Praise the Lord. So, Pastor has given us a platform for us to pray. We have prayers every Monday by 8 o'clock. We just come together and we pray for 15 minutes. Amen. Praise the Lord. I will encourage you that this is a time where we take out prayer, prayer points that, are, that, are, that has been given to us spiritually, has been given to us by the Spirit. And this year we are going to be dwelling on the vision which God has given to our man of God. We are going to drive those visions deep in our spirit as we pray in other tongues on Monday for 15 minutes. So I'm encouraging you, join me. I want you to join me. Let us do this together. I can't do it on my own. I can't pray for everybody. But I encourage you, like, come and join me. Let us pray together. Let us move God. Let, let us, let us, 2023 was a year, praise the Lord, of perfection. But this is a year of increase. That's right. The word of God says more and more. So there is, there is more opportunities for us this year. Let us dare to believe God. Let us come together. Let us lock, lock hands with pastor. Let us lock hands with him. Because as we are praying, you are not just praying for yourself. I said the promises of God is two, twofold. You are praying now and you are praying for your future. You are praying for your families because during these prayers, we pray because of the fasting and praying on Tuesday. Preparing us ahead for Tuesday. Because when you get yourself charged up in the spirit on Monday night, then Tuesday, it becomes easy for you. And especially those who do not speak in other tongues, it is an opportunity for you to come and listen. And as you are listening, why? Your spirit also will get energized. Because our words are corrupted. How many of these words can you say? You are going to be praying for 12 noon to 8. How many of your words are you going to say throughout, throughout those times? Your words are limited. But when you speak in other tongues, it takes you from one level to another. And funny enough, all through the year, I said 15 minutes, but I'm sure the people on, that comes on that line have testified that we have, we have played more than 15 minutes. Because the spirit takes over. It is not even me. Sometimes I try to stop it. I can't even stop. I just, oh Lord, Lord, I need to stop this because I need people to go back to do their stuff. Because I think 15 minutes is small for us to even pray in other tongues. But we want to start again. Praise the Lord. 
So I want to encourage you that if you want to sign up or you want to uh, join us, you want some encouragement, you can speak to me or Sister Brittany or there is uh, something for us to uh, sign up over there. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us welcome uh, Minister Kenya for the Spring Valley and Outreach. <laughs> But Jesus is talking to us. He's, and, and, and this in my heart and mind is the mission and vision that we're carrying uh, where Spring Valley is concerned. To open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan unto God. That they may receive forgiveness of sins and inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith that is in me. That scripture is so powerful, I've even begun to pray it over my lost loved ones. We're going to Spring Valley to open their eyes, to turn them from darkness to light, from the power of Satan unto God. And I just want, this has been a corporate effort. I want to say thank you to everybody. I can't name everyone. Every prayer that's been prayed, you know, on Tuesday nights, we pray in the spirit. We pray for Spring Valley. Every follow-up call that's been made. We've got new members that have just recently, you know, lock arms, calling the residents, every need that's been met through your tithes and through your offerings, you know, people getting mattresses, beds, and things that I may not even know of, every need that's been met, for rides that's been given to church, we say thank you, and the ministry of the word that's been going forth over there, thank you, the praise team, and so what we want is the ministry that takes place here. We take it outside the four walls of the church. So if you're an usher or a greeter here, we need you there. If you sing here, we need you there. If you take pictures or video here, we need you there. Everything that we do in the house of God, we're taking it over to Spring Valley and producing a full-fledged Holy Ghost field service with testimonies and everything. Salvation being ministered, healing being ministered, breakthrough deliverance is being ministered. What stands out to me most is our consistency. And one of the things, I want to say something and I'm going to explain what I mean. I feel that this ministry that we have been providing has brought credibility back to the church. And what I mean by that is I worked there for a little over a year and I thank God for the opportunity to be there. But while I was there, guess what? I didn't see any churches coming on there over there on a regular basis. I did not see churches coming over there on a regular basis. I did not see them coming and ministering to the people, showing them look, you know, it, it, you know, people are scared to go over there. But by the grace of God, we have served over there since the pandemic. And to God be the glory. And so this year what we want to do is we want to continue to strengthen, establish, settle, and ground them in Christ through teaching the word of God. So if you have a, a teaching gift, if you have a teaching ministry, guess what? This is an opportunity for you to grow and perfect your call. Don't wait for a big platform. Hallelujah. Don't wait for the big spotlights or whatever. You can come over to Spring Valley and teach the people. Amen. And God is going to honor you for that. Your life will, I, I know I, my life will never be the same. Hallelujah. I think my family is better off because of the service that we have given over to Spring Valley. And so the Lord says, whatsoever good we make happen for others, he will make that same good happen for us. And so lastly, I'll say this. In order for us to increase our service over there, we need teams. We need people to be able to serve. You know, we've got we to gotta have more than one service. And that requires more people, more people to minister the word, like I said, more people to give to usher, to greet her, to greet. So if you, you know, want to come and, and, you know, talk to me or we'll, we'll talk about it, you know, ministering the word of God, 20 minutes, 15 minutes or whatever, sharing your testimony, we need that this year. They need that this year. And so I don't want to have to call on you. I know some people is like pulling teeth, but volunteer your gift for the for the service of the Lord to minister to the Spring Valley residents. Thank God for the book fellowship. That's just a supplement. We're reading right now how you can be led by the Spirit of God, but look at that setting as a supplement. It supplements what we're being fed corporately. And we uh, meet 
Wednesday night, 7 to 7.30 p.m. Even if you haven't read the book, you'll still be blessed because we've discussed the chapter. And that setting is open for comments, for it's supposed to be a fellowship. Uh, it's to, to give your feedback so we can grow and feed off one another. So we encourage, if you didn't participate last year, get on board with us this year. And we do need facilitators for that setting as well. So if you would like to facilitate one Wednesday night, reading through the chapter, summarizing, it, picking out points that are important, please talk to me. I would love to have you assist us on Wednesday night. Hallelujah. To God be the glory. And last but certainly not least, First Lady Michelle for the Ministry of Hills. Praise the Lord, saints. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. Amen. I just want to first give thanks to the Lord for uh, all believers and all those that are here in the house of the Lord to receive the word that's coming forth. Amen. And I also want to, before I give thanks to all those, all our volunteers and all our leaders, I'm, I'm going to start out in 1 Corinthians 12, 28. And uh, I want to point out, um, when it, uh, in the beginning, our pastor and was seated with about five of us, about, I guess about four or five of us at a kitchen table and one of our uh, uh, brothers and sisters at uh, home. And uh, pastor, this is one of the scriptures that he had uh, pointed out to us to say that it was a work that the Lord had called upon his life. And so we were all there prepared so that we can take hold and, uh, and serve the man of God. Amen. And uh, here in uh, 1 Corinthians 12, 28, it's, it states, uh, God has appointed for the church. First are apostles. Second are prophets. Third are teachers. Those who, are, those who do miracles, have the gift of healing, can help. Others, I remember someone pointed out to me some years back, they said, uh, I didn't know the ministry of helps was in the Bible. That's why we need the word. Amen. That's why we need to hear the word. Amen. Those who have the gift of leadership. And those who speak in unknown languages. This is what God has appointed for the church. And at, but at that point, at that time when I was listening to the man of God uh, sharing with all of us that were seated there, and I remember uh, thinking to myself, I'm a, I'm a child of God, I'm a wife, I'm a child, I'm a, uh, a mother, and I'm serving in the house of the Lord. Amen. And what that what that took what that took what can I got out of that that I had this opportunity to know, understand that the, the call that's on my husband's life and the call that the Lord had done, called him to be overseer of, I knew that I could be that one to be there by his side and serve with him, amen, as well as bringing the children to be a part of the of, the, of, of helping the man of God in the ministry, amen. And I knew that that I knew that every one that the Lord was going to send, those they didn't know who they were. They just had to be listening. They had to be having their spirit man open in order to be spoken. That those leaders that are in, in this here place and over the years past, they had listened. They did not get distracted that they was not called to come and help and assist the man of God. And I just want to just encourage you and those in our viewers, I want to encourage you, listen to the Lord speaking to your spirit and receive it and know where your place is in the house of the Lord because he has left us here, left us with his hand. And that means that we can go and take the gospel 
Just what you have listened to since you've been seated here about what the Lord has called for the man of God to, uh, to speak into our spirit, all the leaders and lead, uh, listeners, those our viewers, and we step out there and we know our sign. We understand our sign. Amen. And I also want to have a te another testimony. I remember uh, when uh, I was observing this one family that came into the sanctuary. And uh, they came in and uh, I greet us, do what they do, show love and excellence. That's serving. That's how we serve the Lord in the house of the Lord. We, we serve in excellence. And the Lord understand, you know, if you if you don't do about your your mishaps and what you had, you know, didn't didn't do go well in the past, you need to know that the Lord called me. He's speaking to you. He's speaking to you. Just get a hold of that and keep listening. And just keep listening. And just keep listening. Amen. Amen. And I want to point out this that this family they can't come in. And uh, they uh, came in and they would sit down and they kept coming. And uh, one day we was once one uh, the, well, every day at the end of each service we always uh, have announcement and, and uh, encourage those to come out to the table to sign up and uh, be a part of the of ministry of health. And uh, one time I was out here at the table and this one brother he. It was on, I think it was a Thursday night, and he come out of the sanctuary when the doors was open. <laughs> and I said, hey, brother, come on over here and stand. Let's talk with me about what the Lord is speaking to you about, um, on your spirit. And so he came on up. And not before that, I, I discovered that, that the church office had sent us the names of those for the, uh, what is it, the foundation, the strengthening foundation uh, uh, teaching that we have here. And uh, he had all he, he was, his name was on that list, and that's how I was able to recognize the Lord said, "Can't say brother there." And so he walked over to the he walked over to the table and said, "What the Lord? What the Lord saying to you?" And he was just so he was so uh, you know he was he was you know speak well with me, one sharp or nothing like he had somewhere to be or nothing. You know he was this. He said, "Oh well, yeah, you had you had answers." He had answers. <laughs> and one of the answers, he said, uh, yeah, uh, I, I, I know about the thing about the, uh, the, uh, the camera. I said, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Come over here and sign your name right here on the list. And someone is going to get back with you. And that brother is Brother Harry. Right. <laughs> brother Harry blessed me that evening. He blessed me that evening. He just kept, he kept, he kept get that word. Sometimes he'll come a little closer to the pastor Mike, you know, and he'll just keep on sitting there and just taking that word in. And then I call him, come out there. Sometimes I had to stand in the middle of the for you to catch you coming out. I'm talking about those of you, you know, you run up out of here, but I catch you in that front for you. And the brother came on out and uh, he came on there and spoke to him what the Lord had put on his heart and he still served. Amen. And that is my testimony. That is my testimony. And I just want to just let everyone thank and love all the uh, volunteers. You know who they are, because they'll be moving around, and they be walking, and they be chatting, they ain't scared to talk. And just love all. And talk with them. Because see, that's, that's part of the training. We have to talk with others. <laughs> we ain't scared. We got to talk with others. And next thing you know, you, you'll see yourself serving and you'll be like, I can do that. Yeah, because I'm a father. You know, I'm a, I'm a mother. You know, I'm a child of the Most High God. You know, and I'm, I'm spirit filled. You know, because Pastor Mike will make sure that I'm spirit filled. Amen. So I just want to just leave you all with that, buddy. At the end of the service, I want to encourage you to come out to the table. Speak with those out there to the table about what you have. Spirit, with the Lord speaking to you, sign up Amen. and be serving in the house of the Lord. Amen. 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 At this time, I'd like you all, if you would, to join me in welcoming up Minister Brittany.
the spirit of giving. Amen. So we got a lot of different uh, areas where we can serve, and I'm so excited to see who all is going to come out, and just excited about us working together to bring the kingdom here on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. And so what we'll do is it's time for the ministry of giving. And if you would like to be receipted for your giving, if you could raise your hand, the ushers are in the aisles and they'll get you an envelope. And if you're on Facebook, you just would have seen a post to come through. And I'm so excited to say that, again, this is our year of increase. 2024 is our year of increase, and the Lord wants to increase his people, according to Psalms 115, verse 14. And increase, as we've been learning, and as Sister Lucy said, we're going to talk about this day in, day out, because we're speaking this. We receive a prophetic word, and now we're getting it in our system. We're putting it in our minds and in our hearts. And increase means, it means growth. It means expansion. It means to become greater. And in this season, this is what we expect to receive. This is what we expect to see. And I just want to go, um, I want to go to a couple of scriptures here because we got to prepare our eyes and our hearts. This is new. We're at the top of this, of this new year. And so now we got to get it in. We got to get seed in the ground. We have to get it in our system. And so let's go to Genesis 13, 14 through 18. Because we're preparing to receive this prophetic word, and giving is part of this. This is how it's an expression, and I'm going to show you through the scriptures. And so Genesis chapter 13, 14 through 18. And this was, I'm giving an example because Abraham got a prophetic word. He had received something from God, and God was telling him to open up his eyes, and not just his eyes to stretch forth, but for what he was seeing. And it says, I'm going to start off in verse 14, and it says, after Lot had gone to the after Lot had gone, and this is just after, he had allowed Lot, his nephew, to go pick because they were departing. It was a little bit of chaos. It was a little bit of bumping and so forth. So he said, okay, you choose. You'll go your way and I'll go mine. So Lot chose first. And then so Abraham, he, after Lot had gone, this is what happened. It says that the Lord said to Abram, look as far as you can see in every direction north and south and east and west. And I am giving you all of this land as far as you can see to you, to you and your descendants as a permanent possession. And I will give you so many descendants that like the dust of the earth, they cannot be counted. Go and walk through the land in every direction for I am giving it to you. And so Abram moved his camp to Hebron and settled near the oak grove belonging to Mamre. And there he built an, al an altar unto the Lord. So when God speaks to us, we have to receive it, believe it, and get settled in it. And it said that Abraham had built an altar and unto the Lord. And if you go back to, re to read uh, why people built an altar, it talks about what the altar has signified. It signifies a place where the covenant was given. It's honorable, and it's the place where it was received and settled. And this, on December 31st, we received a prophetic word. 2024 is our year of increase. And so we have to receive it in our hearts. We have to get it settled. And so I want to go just before I get ready to, uh, to talk about how giving just intertwines with that. Because as we get it settled, we have to sow a seed in that place. We have to sow in the place where we receive such a prophetic word. So let's go to Genesis 28. And we'll start off from 12 through 15, and then I'm going to jump down. And this is in connection to Jacob. And it says... <coughs> As he slept, he dreamed of a stairway that reached from the earth to the heaven. And he saw the angels of God going up and down the stairway. And at the top of the stairway stood the Lord. And he said, I am the Lord, your God, 
the God of your grandfather, Abraham, and the God of your father, Isaac, the ground you are lying on belongs to you, and I am giving it to you and your descendants. And your descendants will be as numerous as the dust of the earth, and they will spread out on um, going back uh, to Abraham. But he says, I am giving you this to you and your descendants. And then I just want to jump down where he says, What's more, I am with you and I will protect you wherever you go. And one day I will bring you back to this land and I will not leave you until I have finished giving you everything that I have promised you. So just in, even in reading that, we have to believe. Here's another, here's another area where we have to believe. He just heard a word. And something that Sister Uzi said earlier that really spoke to me, that faith is now and it's futuristic. Mm -hmm. So he had to believe that what God had promised him was going to come to pass. Now Abraham just got, uh, was just finished, you know, kind of bumping space between him and his nephew. Now he brought his nephew with him and now he's seeing his nephew venture out on his own and he's taking his family and going in another direction. Jacob was being chased down by his brother who said that he was he was he wanted to kill him and he had just so he didn't really know God well because he actually you read that story he had signified to his father that he was somebody else so he lied to his father to get the blessing but even still we see that God was faithful to his word so much so that when he had a dream he knew the status of where Jacob was at. He knew the status that at that point Jacob had laid his head down by himself. And no matter what he did, he still spoke how he was consistent. And I thought about how Pastor talked to us about Hebrews 13, verse 8, that he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And so when we hear that word, it sounds well, but we got to keep it thriving in our hearts and in our minds. And so let's just jump down to verse 18. Uh, through 22 and it says the next morning Jacob got up very early and he took the stone that he that rested he had rested on his head against and he set it upright as a memorial pillar then he poured olive oil over it and then I'm gonna jump down to 20 he says then Jacob made this vow if God will indeed be with me and protect me on this journey, and if he will provide me with food and clothing, and if I return safely to my father's home, then the Lord will certainly be my God. And this memorial pillar that I have set up will become the place of for worshiping God, and I will present to God a tenth of everything he gives to me. So he, he too, he marked that place. It says, so he took what he had, he probably couldn't do an altar, but he took some olive oil and he set that stone right as he got up. It just wasn't a place where he was laying his head. Now it became significant because he had a moment with God. First Jacob, the same person that was, uh, you know, he was, he was, you know, kind of looking and crooked to get what he wanted. He seen how God, God didn't move his word from him. He was consistent. So he set up a place. And so now we have this word. And so it's not just us saying that 2024 is our year of increase. And it's not just increase in just wealth, but it's, it, it says growth, expansion, wisdom, stature. All of those things fall into place. But how am I going to keep that relevant if I don't mark that time, this this. This specific time that, Lord, you said this was increased. And i got to put seed in the ground. Because when I have seed in the ground, if you think about a natural person, when they purchase some stock and then they hear that things have went up, they go back and check on that stock to know i got an investment in this. I was talking to a parent and he said to me, he said, I'm, this is not just something I just want to help you with. I'm vested in it because my daughter's going there. See, when you have, or they say, skin in the game, when you have something in it, you're vested in it. He had a dream, and, and Abraham, he told him to open up your eyes, and he could have said, yeah, I see all this stuff. And his mind could have went back to how Lot treated him, and after he took Lot, even though he didn't have to take Lot, but he took him anyways, he could have went through all that. No, he received it as if it was something new. So I just want to go to one more scripture here. And if we could go to Ecclesiastes, Ecclesiastes 11, 1 through 4. 
And it says, send your grain across the seas. And in time, profits will flow back to you. But divide your investments among many places, for you do not know what risk might lie ahead. And when the clouds are heavy, the rains come down, whether a tree falls north or south, it stays where it falls. Farmers who wait for perfect weather never plant. If they watch every cloud, they will never harvest. So I encourage you to sow in the place. We can't build an altar. We can't, we can't stop, but we're in the place of God. And there's many different investments, many different things that God is calling you to cast your seed to. We have our Tuition Free Academy. We have our Vow Campaign. We have Spring Valley. We have many different things that the church is in operation with, and it's all for God. But as you sow your seed, you're putting pressure on the 2024 is our year of increase. So as you do that, I'm helping other areas to expand. I'm helping others. If you, and even if you don't, you start off, okay, I don't have it this way. Then you do it in chickens, you do it in goats, you do it in time, you do it in heart, you do it in prayer. You do it however, do it in your service. But start somewhere. And I think about this because when he said this, that is the seed that you're putting in the ground. He said one thing. He said that no matter where it comes from, he says that it stays where it falls. So I'm hoping, I'm believing that it's going to grow and mature. And so that's what we have to do with our giving on today. So even if you weren't, you weren't faithful in your tithe and offering, you weren't faithful in those areas, today is a day. Because when I put a seed in the ground and I'm believing for it, I'm faithful to your word, God. I'm doing this because I know that what you said, I received what you said. It's also a confirmation. Like when they built the altar, it said that they did it as to show its covenant. The, it, it, it shows where the promise broke forward to. And so we saw where we received where the promise, the prophetic word broke forth at. And that's here in this ministry. And we're believing that all the areas that when we put our seed in, that those areas are thriving. And then the increase, what we're believing for individually, is God to bring forth because we help it to bring forth corporately. And we trust God. So let's stand to our feet unto today. And let's believe. Let's get our seed ready. And let's give it faithfully unto the Lord. We spoke this vision, and one of the things that stood out were where it said, it says that we commit every area of our, of our lives to growth, expansion, greatness in the name of Jesus Christ. So every area, it doesn't exclude finances, because it's not only a command, but we give because we believe. We believe. So let's get ready. And if you're on Facebook, those areas are where you can give. You can give online. You can call. You can even have Cash App now. So it's no excuse on how we can give until we can give into the ministry. And we're going to get ready to close out in prayer. And then they'll collect the uh, tithes and offering. And the praise team will go ahead and lead us in the worship. So Heavenly Father, we just come before you. And we worship you on today. We honor you and we praise you and we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Father God, for this prophetic word that 2024 is our year of increase. And Father God, right now, as we prepare to sow our seed, we put it in the ground. And we give it unto you. We release it unto you, Father God, believing and trusting in increase because this is the very place where your word was cast. And so we cast our seed unto you, believing that it will grow forth. It will bring about growth, expansion, greatness, Father God. And we thank you, Father God, that everywhere that we put this seed, everywhere that we have cast our seed at, Father God, that we will see things go forward, Father God, a hundredfold. We're believing for it, Father God, to be something that's so great. So we thank you for the seed that you have given us. We thank you, Father God, for the covenant, for the promise, Father God, for this prophetic word. And Father God, we are faithful. 
And we ask that you continue to grow us up and mature us up, Father God, in the things that are trusting and relying on you, Father God, so that when increase breaks out, Father God, it is breaking out on your people, both corporately and individually, Father God. And Father God, but most importantly, that every bit of increase that comes forward, mm. it is to further advance your kingdom, because everything we do is about this relationship with you, about your your kingdom coming forward here on earth as it is in heaven. So use it, Father God. Use us, Father God, and increase us, Father God, so that we can better market you to the people, so that we can offer up better things, Father God, that you have called for us to give and do and how to serve your people. And we ask it all in the powerful name of Jesus Christ, believing that it is so and settled. Amen.
give him thanks, give him praise, all oh, that he's keeping you, preserving you, sustaining you. Oh, glory to God. Give him thanks first that he already has. He has kept you. He has sustained you. He has preserved you. He has favored you. He has increased you. Oh, thank him for what he's already done. Oh, just give him thanks. Glory to God for what he's already done. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord, that you already have kept us. You already have sustained us. You already have preserved us. You already have favored us. You already have increased us. Hallelujah. And we give you thanks for what we've already received from you. We return thanksgiving for you. You said in your word in everything, give thanks for this is the will of God concerning us. So we return thanksgiving to you, oh God, for all that you've done for us throughout all last week. Oh, glory be to God. How you kept us as the apple of your eye, oh God. Oh, how you didn't allow no weapon formed against us to prosper. Oh, we thank you for every answer prayer, oh God. Every financial breakthrough. Oh, we just thank you for every increase, every favorable situation that you've been ministered to us. We just return thanks to you. Oh, we will not forget, oh God, the benefits that we received from you throughout all last week, oh God. And so we return thanksgiving to you. We return praise to you. To you alone deserve the glory. You alone deserve the honor. You alone deserve the praise. And we thank you and we praise you for your faithfulness to us. Oh, glory be to God. Hallelujah. When the enemy came in like a flood, you rose up a stack of the gifts of Lord. Hallelujah. You kept us. You preserved us. You sustained us. Even when we missed it, oh God, you had mercy upon us. You forgave us and washed us in the blood of Jesus. You cleansed us from all unrighteousness, oh God. You revived us again, oh God. You restored the joy of our salvation, oh God. And so we just return thanks to you. We return praise to you. We return glory to you, oh God, for all that you've done for us throughout our last week. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. We say thank you, Lord. We just want to thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you.
Hallelujah. So we thank Him for the things that have happened. We thank Him for the things that are happening. And we thank Him so the happenings would not stop. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So we thank Him, amen, for what He's done. So let's thank Him for what He's, for what he's doing. For what is He doing? He's increasing us. More and more us in our church. So Father, we thank you for the increase of God. Oh, we thank you that you are increasing us. You are expanding us. You are growing us. You are making us more greater. Oh, you are favoring us and you are keeping us. So we thank you today. Oh, we thank you today for what you are doing. Hallelujah. We thank you that you're the same yesterday, today, and forever. We thank you that you're the author and the finisher of our faith. Oh, we thank you that you are our wisdom, our righteousness, our sanctifier, our redeemer. We thank you that you are perfecting the things that pertain unto us. We thank you. We thank you today that you're bringing your word to pass in our lives and that you are kept us alive so you can finish the good work that you began in us. So we thank you today for increasing us, for favoring us, and for keeping us. In Jesus' name. Thank Amen. That nothing is too hard for him. 
Amen. I said nothing is too hard for him. Saving you, healing you, delivering you, setting you free, prospering you, it's not too difficult. It may be impossible for man. It may be impossible for the doctor. It may be impossible for the bank or the lawyer. It may be impossible for you, but it's not impossible for him. Amen. Glory be to God. Amen. Now look here with me to Jeremiah 32. Let's pick it up in verse 17. Amen. The Bible informs us of who he is. Amen. And what he does. Amen. He said, Our Lord God, behold, thou hast made the heaven and the earth by thy great power, thou stretched out arm, and there is nothing, absolutely nothing, too hard for thee. What's too hard for him? Nothing. Is cancer too hard for him? Mm -hmm. What about sugar diabetes? What about arthritis? It's not too hard for him. No. What's too hard for him? No. Nothing. Whew. Glory be to God. Amen. I don't believe that God, amen, puts unnecessary statements in his Bible. Amen. I don't believe he, he feels his words, amen, with things of minor importance. That's the reason that scripture is right there. Amen. And the reason that scripture is there is because we are dealing with an enemy who comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Amen. You're dealing with an invisible adversary. Amen. The Bible says in 1 Peter chapter 5, amen, verse 8, that he walks around as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. Are you seeing this? Ephesians 6 verse 16 says, We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers, against, against spiritual wickedness. I'm sorry, 6 verse 12. Against spiritual wickedness in high places, against rulers of darkness, Look who we wrestling in. Look who we contending with. It's not with just the, 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 the person at your work who don't like you or the person who pull out in front of you at the, at the, you know, on the street or the person who lie on you. Amen. You're dealing with an invisible adversary who is committed to your destruction. Amen. I can see it is. And he come to work every day. I say he show up to work every day. I, I, and as long as you're in this world, you're going to have some kind of confrontation with him. Because Jesus said in John 16, verse 33, amen, that he walked that in the world, you're going to have test, trial, tribulation. But he said, be a good cheer. Why? Because I've overcome the world for you. So as long as you're in this world, you're going to be contending with someone who opposes you. Are you saying this? Matter of fact, every opportunity, every door of favor, every door of promotion come, that, that, that comes to you introduces to you a new enemy, a new adversary. Amen. Amen. A lot of people want promotion, but they don't want to deal with the adversary that comes with it. Notice there in 1 Corinthians 16, verse 9. Amen. Glory to God. The Bible tells us that for a great door, for effectual, is open for you. What kind of door? A great door. Man, this door got blessing, promotion. Amen. It's got increase on it. Amen. And God has opened it for you. But he didn't stop there. What did he say? But there are many adversaries to contend with. Are you seeing this today? Amen. So how prepared I am to deal with the adversary would determine if I benefit from that open door. Are you seeing this? And many doors will open for you this year. But if you're not prepared to deal with the adversary to come with it, that door will close without you benefiting. Mm -hmm. Are you seeing this? Mm -hmm. Amen. Because sometimes tests and trials, amen, they come unannounced. Huh? Mm -hmm. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. But tests and trials, amen, glory to God, even though they come unannounced, if they catch me prepared to deal with them, Woo, all of them turn into, amen, testimonies. Woo, Woo glory to God. Amen. All of them turn into prayers reports. Mm. Are you seeing this today? Amen. amen, glory to God. So my assignment today is to get you equipped, amen, for what this year has, amen, uh, uh, packaged with, amen, and to get you equipped, amen, to overcome every adversary and foe. To turn every test into a testimony, every trial into a triumph, to be listed amongst those who overcome and those who rule over the adversary. Amen? Amen. 
Glory be to God. So you got to understand that the Lord is telling us that there's nothing too hard for him. He said he made the heavens, the earth, amen, glory to God, and everything in it by his great power. Amen. Oh, glory to God. He's the God of the wind, the God of the sea. He's the God, amen, of the whole earth. He, he's the God who owned the cattle on a thousand hills, the silver and gold, amen, all are his. Oh, glory to God. Are you seeing this today? And nothing is too hard for him. Amen. I said nothing is too hard for him. He's the God that it reverses the irreversible. Amen. Now let's look at some irreversible cases that he reversed. Amen. Glory to God. For instance, that was Lazarus. You remember he was dead four days. Look there in John chapter 11, verse 39. I said he was dead four days. Amen. And the God who reversed the irreversible, he showed up. Glory to God. And Jesus said, take away the stone. Martha, the sister of him, said, he's dead under him. And by this time, he stinketh, for he had been dead four days. Are you seeing this? Woo, somebody said, it looks like it's irreversible. Woo, but watch what, watch what the God who reverses the irreversible said. Notice what he said in verse. He said, Jesus said unto him, amen, did I tell thee if you would believe, you would see the glory of God? Ooh, what's the condition of her sin? Her case get reversed? Her believing. Mm, glory to God. What's the condition of you getting your case reversed? You believing. Mm, every irreversible symptom, every irreversible finances crisis in your life is subject to you believing. Ooh, glory. It don't matter if it's been there four days, four months, four years. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Glory to God. It's reversible. It's condition. It's subject to you believing. Are you seeing this today? Yeah. Ooh, glory. Glory be to God. The Bible tells us in Mark chapter 9 verse 23 all things are possible to him that believe. Yeah. Ooh, you can reverse the irreversible when you believe. Yeah. Mm, when did you get saved? When you believe. Amen. When you going to get healed? When you believe. When you going to get filled? When you believe. Amen. When you going to get free? When you believe. When you going to get your money? When you believe. When your children going to get saved? When you believe. Who glory to God. It's all conditioned upon you believing. Every irreversible, seemingly irreversible situation is subject to you believing. Hmm. Now notice what he said. He said, didn't I tell you that if you would believe, you would see? Woo, glory be to God. Woo, David said in Psalms 27, 13, he said, I would have fainted unless I believed to see. Woo, you got to believe to see the goodness of God in the land of the living. You got to believe to see your irreversible get reversed. Glory to God. If you don't believe to see, amen, the irreversible is going to make you faint. But if you believe to see, amen, the irreversible is going to faint. Yeah. Woo, it's going to get reversed. Hallelujah. Are you seeing this today? And believing is a choice. You choose to believe independent of how you feel, independent of how you look. Amen. Glory be to God. Your tests and trials are by for a moment. Amen. But while they're there, they're working something for you. A far more and eternal way to glory. Amen. 2 Corinthians 3.17. Amen. A far more and eternal way to 2 Corinthians 4.17. A, a far more eternal way to glory. Well, glory to God. Are y'all seeing this? Amen. Amen. Why that test is there? Why that trial is there? Amen. You let the Bible inform you of what's happening while it's there. No matter how you feel, how it looks, tell you what it's there for. Let the Bible tell you what it's there for. It's there working something for you. Oh, glory to God. A far more, an eternal way to glory. Amen. How is it working this for you? Verse 18 says, Amen. While we look not at the things that are seen, that tells me that this thing that I see can be reversed. Woo, glory. But at the things that are not seen. Because the things that are not seen, amen, are eternal. But the things that are seen are temporal. They're reversible. 
Counsel is reversible. It's temp temporal. Amen. Poverty is reversible. It's temporal. Yeah. Worry is reversible. It's temporal. Yeah. But peace can't be reversed. It's eternal. Yeah. Glory to God. Yeah. So I'm not looking at what I feel, what I see. I'm looking at, amen, the one that promised me that he could reverse it. Yeah. I'm looking to him. Are you seeing this today? Now notice it. Well, Pastor, you don't know what I've been dealing with, man. It's been, well, look here. Look at, look at Romans chapter 8. Look at verse 18. Amen. Pay attention to the Bible. Amen. He said, for I reckon woo, that the suffering of this present time are not worthy, not worthy, not worthy to do what? To be compared to the glory that's going to be revealed in you. Woo, this suffering is going to get reversed. Are you seeing this? I said, are you seeing this today? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. See, I let the Bible inform me of how it's going to turn out for me. Yeah. Glory to God. Amen. Now go back to John chapter 11. Amen. Let's pick it up in verse 40, 40, 40, verse 41. Amen. Jesus talking to Martha. He said, then they took away the stone from the place of, of where the dead lay. Watch this. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. Woo, verse 42. Amen. And I knew that you hear it me always. But because of the people which stand by, I said it, that they may believe that you sent me. Watch what happened in verse 43. And when he had spoken, he cried with a loud voice, Nazareth, come forth. Now watch what happened in verse 44. And he that was dead came forth. Are you seeing this? Yeah. He reversed the irreversible. Yeah. Well, you may be saying that was Jesus back then. Well, Hebrews 13 verse 8 says he's the same yeah. yesterday, today, and forever. Yeah. Are you seeing this? Yeah. So if he can reverse the irreversible back then, he can reverse the irreversible today. And if he can even reverse the irreversible today, he can reverse the irreversible tomorrow. All he needs for you to do is to cooperate and participate with him. And how do you do that? Believe. Glory. That's the only work you got to do to reverse the irreversible. So it don't matter what the enemy show up this year to do, you can reverse it. You can send him back to the center. You can send sugar, diabetes, headaches, and arthritis, whatever show up. Amen. Insufficiency, whatever show up. Amen. You can say, return to the center. Amen. <laughs> Why? Because I believe God. Amen. Are you seeing this today? Amen. I said, are you seeing this today? Amen. I said, are you seeing this? Amen. Now, what does it mean? Now, notice, let's work on this belief. Amen. Because, see, a lot of people get it. They don't really understand what it means to believe. But the Lord showed me what it means to believe. Amen. Look there with me to John chapter 6. Amen. Well, 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 well. Let's, let's look at another irreversible case. For, okay. Look, look there in Mark chapter 5. Amen. Uh, and uh, in verse, uh, what is that? Verse 22, J. Iris showed up. Amen. Mark 5, 22, Jairus, he was a certain a leader, a ruler of the synagogue, Jairus by name. And when he saw him, he fell on his feet. Look at the next verse. Amen. And he saw him saying, my little daughter. Now, who are we talking about? We're talking about the one who nothing is too hard for. Y'all remember that? Yeah. Jeremiah 32, 17, nothing is too hard for him. Then in Jeremiah 32, 27, he said he the God of all flesh. And nothing is too hard for me. He the God of what? Oh, well, amen. What your flesh made of? Organs, muscles, tissues, arteries, veins, bones. <laughs> he the God of all the way. Woo! Hallelujah! Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Look at that. Jeremiah 32, 27. Amen. Glory to God. I don't know how the Holy, Holy Ghost brought that back up in my grimace. Thank you, Bible man. Put us back over there. He said, Behold, I'm the Lord, the God of what? Man. The God of what? Man. So can't say the God of your flesh. Jesus is. Mm -hmm. Woo! Hallelujah. Cancer trying to tell you that he, he ain't the God of all flesh. 
But he's telling you he is the God of all flesh. And he's telling you ain't nothing too hard for you. Ain't nothing too hard for him. Nothing in your flesh, going on in your flesh, that's going to come on your flesh. Nothing is too hard for him. Because he's the God of all flesh. Now here's where the conflict come in. Romans 3 verse 4. Romans 3 verse 4. Amen. Here's your part. Let God be true. Woo. And every something in your body or not. Woo. Are you saying this? Amen. Amen. As it is written. See, going back to what's written. That thou mayest be justified in what you say. What you say in the council. God is the God of all of my flesh. Woo. And he said, Jesus took you from me. Jesus bore you from me. And he said, by his stripes, I'm healed. Amen. He said, he sent his word and healed and delivered me. He said, man, don't live by bread alone, but by every word that come out of his mouth. So I'll decree and declare, he's the God of my flesh. And I'll live and not die and declare his words. Hallelujah. 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 And he said, when I say that, when I say what he say, I overcome when I'm judged. When counsel try to judge me, I overcome. Oh, my God. Are y'all seeing this? Yeah. It don't matter what comes this year. It don't matter. Nothing is too hard for him. Woo! You got to stand with him, not against him. Yeah, if you want to overcome that thing. Yeah. Amen. Now watch this. Notice what he said. Woo, glory to God. Yeah. Now, 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 a lot of people don't, they, they, you know, they let the enemy whoop them so much that they develop a mentality of a loser. I ministered that on the New York service this morning. How to never lose a battle. Amen. Y'all ought to go out there and listen to it. It was good. Amen. Glory to God. But the Lord told us, he said, no matter what this year, amen, bring to you, remember, nothing is too hard for me. Nothing. Amen. Glory to God. And he's committed to you. Amen. Why? Because the Bible says in Romans chapter 8, amen, verse 31, if God be for you, who can be against you? Now look at who for you. The one who nothing is too hard for. Yeah. <laughs> Over to God. I don't know about y'all, but I'm about to take off shot. Woo, hallelujah. Glory be to God. Amen. Now, 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 watch this. Watch this. Go back to Mark 5, 22, 23. J.I.R. has got this dog. That, amen. Glory to God. The Bible says she was at the point of death. Yeah. See, it looked like it was irreversible. Amen. But the Bible said that he said to Jesus, I pray you, come and lay your hands on her that she may be healed and she shall live. Amen. He know that this case can be reversed. He know it. Well, glory be to God. Well, he came to Jesus because he was there physically. Amen. Well, what did Jesus say? Amen. About him being present. Amen. He said in his word, amen, in Matthew chapter 18, amen, verse 20, he said, where two or more are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. So he's more present than he is now than he was then. They had to go to a geological location. They had to find he was just one person in one place. But the Bible said, where well, were two or more gathered together in his name, that's where he is. Yeah. Oh, glory to God. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Are y'all seeing this today? Yeah. And then Matthew 18, 19 tell you what to do while you're assembling together, while he's there. He said, if any of you, amen, shall agree on earth, as touching anything that they shall ask, it will be done for them of our Father, which is in heaven. Yeah. Are y'all seeing this today? Yeah. So all I need is a prayer partner and we can reverse the irreversible. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> Glory be to God. Yeah. Are you seeing this? Yeah. Woo! Hallelujah! Yeah. I'm ready for 2024. Amen. Ooh, glory to God. I just, I'm, I'm ready for every test, every trial.
every situation, every storm, every battle, every war, amen, whatever, so I'm prepared and ready. Why? Because he's already informed me that there's nothing too hard for me, and he already told me that he for me. Glory be to God. Woo! This test trial, amen, that don't separate me from him. Amen. Matter of fact, when trouble show up, that's when he really get pressed. Amen. Look at Psalms 46, verse 1. Amen. Notice what he said. Amen. Glory to God. Psalms 46. God is our refuge. God is our strength. He's a very present help in the time of trouble. He was already present, Brother Dennis. Amen. Dick and Jane. But when trouble showed up, he got very present. To reverse the irreversible. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Look at the next verse. Amen. Look at David. Boy, he got so much confidence in God. He said, therefore, I will not fear. Though the earth be removed, though the mountains be carried in the midst of the sea. Mm. He said, I don't care what kind of catastrophe happened in the earth. I ain't going to fear. Woo, because he's very present to him. He can reverse any seemingly irreversible. Glory to God. Are y'all seeing this today? Yeah. Now go back to Mark chapter 5. Let's look at verse 23. Amen. Notice he came and got Jesus. He said, Jesus, you come and lay hands on my daughter. She's going to live. That situation going to be, death going to get reversed. Amen. Amen. Oh, Glory to God. Yeah. And, and Jesus went with him. Much people followed him and thronged him. Then we see this woman here. Amen. She doesn't heard about the irreversible God. She got a seemingly irreversible case. Amen. Certain woman would have an issue of blood. How long? Twelve. It don't look like it's going nowhere, does it? Yeah. How can you see it? And she had money. She, she had good money, too. Amen. The Bible says, amen, next verse. Amen. The Bible says, amen, she suffered many things of many physicians, spent all that she had, nothing better but rather grew worse. Can y'all see this today? Yeah. Can y'all see this today? Yeah. She tried to reverse the irreversible and couldn't. Glory. But the Bible says in the next verse, when she heard of Jesus, what did she hear? Nothing is too hard for you. <laughs> You're the one who reverses the irreversible. Woo, glory to God. Are you seeing this today? I said, are you seeing this today? And when she heard, what did she do? She came. Hallelujah. You just can't hear and don't do nothing. You got to hear and come to him. <laughs> Glory be to God. And you better be saying something. You better not be talking about your problem. No, you got to be talking about him. For she said, what did she say? When I touch but his clothes, I shall be made whole. Yeah. You got to let God be true. Your symptoms are not. Yeah. Ooh, glory to God. He don't want you coming to him talking about your symptoms, talking about how you feel. He wants you coming to him talking about who he is, what he said, what he did. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, 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 God. Are y'all seeing this with me? Oh, getting so happy. Oh, man, this word works for me. I'm telling you, I know how to work this word. I'm telling you, man. Stop me showing up. I said, oh, Jesus got that. That Jesus already done said something about that. Done, done something about that. Yeah. Right. That thing is still there. I said, Jesus for me. Woo, Jesus, I keep running it into him. See, see, sister B, I keep running it in them. I don't run it into how I feel. I don't run it into what happened last week. I don't run it into what people are doing to me. I don't run it into what I got in the bank. I run it into what Jesus said. Yeah. Woo! Glory to God. And I just stay right there. Jesus said, Woo! Nothing is too hard for him. Jesus said, He's with me. Jesus said, Don't be fearful. Don't be dismayed. Because He's with me. He'll help me. He'll strengthen me. He'll uphold me. Yeah. Woo, glory to God. Yeah. Hallelujah. Right. Jesus told me not to fear. Woo, I'll be dismayed. Now watch this. The Bible said, when I touch with his clothes, I should be made whole. See that seven. And straightway the fountain of my blood did what? Right. What? Right. What that mean? It got reversed. Right. <laughs> it got reversed. Yeah. I said it got reversed. Yeah. I said it got reversed. Yeah. I said it got reversed. Yeah. Woo, glory to God. 
And she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. Come on, next verse. And Jesus immediately knowing that virtue had gone out there, he turned in the presence and said, Who touched my clothes? Verse 31. And his disciples said unto him, The multitude throng it in. You say, Who touched me? Verse 32. And he turned around and looked to see who had done this thing. Next verse. But the woman feared and trembled. Amen. Knowing that what was done in her, she came down and told him all her problems. Mm. Now what she tell him? All the truth. She told him who he was. Who is Jesus? He the truth, the way, the life. She told him, amen, that nothing is too hard for him. You're the God of all flesh. Amen. You made the heavens, the earth, by your great power. And nothing is too difficult for me. And I believe you. And I came and I touched you. Woo -hoo -hoo. Glory to God. And watch what Jesus said to her. He said to her, daughter, me being who I am, Mm -mm. Me being sovereign. Mm -mm. This being your time. Mm -mm. No, 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 no. This being my will for you. Uh -uh. What did he tell her? Your faith. In me. What I promised and said. Your faith has something to do. Amen. With this reverse case in your life. You reverse this. You reverse the irreversible. Are you seeing this? Yes. Well, when it's the Lord's timing, well, you know, he healed whoever he chooses. No, he healed those who have faith. Yeah. 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 Glory to God. Are you seeing it? He healed those who believe. Who can hope in God? And believing is a choice. Amen. Believing is made up of two choices. Amen. One choice to believe. And I know the choice to stick with that choice. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, God. Somebody say two choices. Two choices. Come on. <laughs> Woo! You tell that symptom, you tell that situation, I choose to believe God. Amen. Amen. And I'm going to keep choosing to believe in yeah. I'm going to stick to that choice. The Bible says in Hebrews 10, 23, hold fast to the confession of your faith. How? Without waiting. So you got to make a choice to believe, and you got to stick with that choice while it's under attack. He went out to tell you to hold fast to it. Amen. <laughs> Woo, glory. Somebody say, I won't repent of what I repented of. Mm. Are you seeing this? I repent of fear. I repent of doubt and unbelief. Yes, and I ain't going to repent of what I repented of. I choose to believe God. Yeah. Glory to God. Are you seeing this? Yeah. Now get back over there. Amen. Here go J. Iris. Amen. Look here. Notice in verse, verse what is that? 32. He, he, uh, 32. He, he, and, he, and well, verse 33. Uh, and then verse 40, 34. All right, now watch what happened in verse, well, verse 35. Watch what happened. While he yet spake, there came unto him of the ruler of the synagogue. Are you seeing this? Can you imagine he is the winning guy, Jesus, to bring him to his house, to lay hands on her daughter, his daughter, amen, and this woman with the issue of blood that interrupted him and stole his daughter to him. Can you imagine the thought going through his mind when his people showed up and said, we just left your daughter, she dead, man. It's, it's, it's all. Amen. But don't remember, he's the God of all flesh. And there is nothing, absolutely nothing, too difficult or hard for him. But how you going to make nothing, amen, amen, too difficult or hard for you? Amen. How you going to transfer him to the present, to where you need it? Believe. Watch what he said. Notice, why trouble the master any father? As soon as Jesus heard that word, he spoke. What did he say to the ruler of the synagogue? Don't be afraid. Don't Only believe. That's all you got to do. That's all he requires you. Glory to God. Are you seeing this today? That's all. Man, that's all you got to do is believe. Just believe what you asked me to do and me telling you I'm going to do it. Just believe that. Don't feel. Amen. Don't believe what they said. What they said is temple. 
when I say it is eternal. Glory to God. What they say can be reversed. What I say can't be reversed. Glory to God. Woo! Boy, I feel that in my spirit. Somebody right now in here today. Amen. Something has been plaguing you. Amen. Has laid hold upon you. Has brought you under siege. Today marks the end of that siege on your body. That siege on your money. That siege on your family. That siege on your marriage. That siege on your career. That siege on your business. Today marks the end of every siege upon your life. For the one who can reverse the irreversible has shown up. He is present today to reverse what seemingly be an irreversible in your life and before this day ends, you would have seen it be reversed. Yeah. Say yeah. the Lord. Yeah. Yeah. Glory to God. Thank you, oh, hallelujah. Yeah. Amen. 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 Say it with me. Today marks the end, the day day marks the the end. end. of every irreversible plague. Yeah, I said, why are you talking? 
going into a mission right here. Okay. <laughs> Don't believe. 
Are you seeing this? Oh, glory to God. Amen. That's number two. Amen. The third reason is, is because they don't accept the message. It's offered to them, but they don't accept it. Amen. Some Christians, amen, they rather go on and be with the Lord rather than get healed. Amen. They say, look, I'm, I'm ready to go home and be with the Lord. I don't try to keep people here. <laughs> Amen. I don't went to the hospital and, and said, Jesus, this is what he want to do. He want to deliver you. He want to set you free. And they said, Pastor Mike, I'm, I'm ready to go home and be with the Lord. Just pray that. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, praise the Lord. I didn't pray that. The Lord sent him up out of here gloriously. <laughs> <laughs> Testimony fashion. Glory to God. What that is about? Look there in Hebrews 10. Amen. Look at, look at verse 30. 30 uh, no, Hebrews 11. Hebrews 11. Verse 35. I think that's over there. Look there. Three reasons. It says, women received their dead, raised to life. And others, somebody say others. Uh -huh. Others were tortured, not what? <laughs> not what? Not what? That man, it was awful. But they didn't accept it. Why? They wanted to obtain a better resurrection. They just wanted to be with the other. That's what Paul, look, look here at first Philippians 1. Let's pick it up in verse 21. Philippians 1, verse 21. He said, to live is Christ. And well, let's go to verse 19. And to die is gain. Watch this. Notice verse 19. He said, For that should turn out to my salvation through your prayers, supply of spirit. Verse 20. Amen. And he said, According to my earnest expectation, for in nothing I should be ashamed, but all boldness always name Christ be magnified in my body, whether it be by life or death. And then verse 21. He said, To live is Christ and to what? To die again. So when you see dying as a game, Man, you, you might not accept deliverance if you see that as a game. Watch this. This is how he saw it as a game. Verse 22. He said, notice. He said, hey, he said, but if I live in the flesh, it's the fruit of my labor. Yet I choose what I know not. Notice verse 23. He said, for I am in a strait between two. He said, I'm undecisive. I'm going back and forth with these two things. What two things? Having a desire to depart. And be with the Lord. Which is what? Damn. So he said, man, I'm about to take off y'all. I got deliverance, but I, I might not accept it. Because I don't saw something far better. Are y'all seeing this? Are y'all seeing this? Yeah. Woo! Glory to God. Verse 24. But then he changed his mind. Nevertheless, to abide in the flesh is more needful for you. So he said, I got my eyes, amen, off of what's better for me. Now I got my eyes on what's better for you. So it's more needful that I stay in the flesh so it can benefit you. Amen. Man, are y'all saying that? Yeah. So three reasons why people don't, don't get their irreversible reverse. Number one, ignorance. Number two, not mixing faith with what Jesus said. And number three, not accepting the limit. Man. So whenever I'm ministering to people, I locate them in these three areas. Glory to God. I just locate them right there. And sometimes I tell them, oh, you finna die. Go on, get ready, man. Get your children and family ready. Why? Because they reject the knowledge. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Amen. They ain't even accepting deliverance. Mm -hmm. They ain't even mixing faith with what they're hearing. So when you leave out the hospital room, they cut the TV on. <laughs> and I don't send them worship and praise. I don't send them ministries and sermons. And I, I say, hey, y'all, I think they don't got ready to receive. And when I get there, I have you listen to them. I, I, I'm going to listen to them. Where's my phone at? Are you seeing this? Amen. Else is going in there praying for them. You're wasting your time and theirs. Amen. Glory 
glory to God. Are you seeing this? Yeah. See, most people think they need a healing when they really need a miracle. Mm -hmm. See, healing is, is something that happens progressively. You begin to amend. A miracle is something got to happen right now. Yeah. And you got to create an environment that attract the miraculous God. And the environment you do that in is believing. He's attracted to those who believe. Are you seeing this? Yes. Now what does it mean to believe? That's what I want to know. What do I have to believe in? Amen. Number one, I have to believe in his love toward me. See, once you believe in his love, oh, that's it. Ooh, Paul said this. Look at Romans chapter 8, verse, verse, verse uh, 35 through 39. Watch what he said. Amen. Notice what he said. He said, neither height nor depth, no, no, nothing can separate me from the love of Christ. See, he done got himself right there. He said, man, I believe in how he loved me on the cross while I was a sinner. Man, how he gonna quit on me now that I'm here? See, I believe in his love towards me. God, it's, see, many people minister, brother, this way they miss it in their faith, the Lord told me. He said, they try to believe something I said without believing in the one who said it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Glory to God. You can't separate me from what I said. Amen. When, when you believing in something I said, you're working on the Lord in. But when you believe in the one who said it, Amen. you're on the right end. Your pride is right. He didn't say love the Lord, Lord. He didn't say love what he said. He said love the Lord your God with all your heart, strength, yeah. and so. Yeah. See, we try to love what he said without loving the one who said it. See, it's not the, the word; it's the person who said the word. So, so who is he? First John four eight. God is love. So I'm believing in his love towards me. Mm. Amen. That's easy to believe what he said. Because he said it out of his love. Woo! Love. Hey! Yeah. Then number two, I'm believing in his ability to do everything. Because nothing ain't too hard for him. Yeah. Then number three, I'm believing in his willingness to use his ability on my behalf. Not only can God do something for you, but he will do it for you. Mm. That's what it means to believe. To believe in his love. Amen. To believe in his ability. And to believe in his willingness to use his ability on your behalf. Mm. Notice here in uh, Luke chapter 5, verse 12, and we'll close. Y'all get this? Yeah. It don't matter what this year brings to you, introduce to you. Jesus is for you. And he reverses the irreversible when you believe. And it came to pass when he was in a certain city, the whole man full of leprosy, seeing Jesus, fell on his face, besought him, said, Lord, if you will, you can make me clean. He knew that he could. But what he didn't know was that he would. We don't need to exercise faith, amen, in his ability. We know he can. But where our faith needs to be exercised in his, in his love and in his willingness. Whew. Glory to God. Because faith worketh out. Galatians 5, 6. Faith worketh by love. So if your faith ain't working, just go investigate his love for you. Look at Romans chapter 5, verse 8. The Bible said, why we were yet sinners. While we were yet sinners, while we were yet sinners, what did Jesus do? You know what he told me, Mr. Brother McCray? He said, he said, everybody I died for was my enemy. He said, what well, none of y'all are my friend. Mm. Mm -hmm. Now why are you gonna question? Amen. My commitment to do you good. When I gave you my best. When you were my enemy. Mm. You were 
question my ability and willingness to heal you when I could have just let you stay a sinner? You think I want you like that? When I gave up my relationship, my statement in heaven with my father? If you didn't need healing, I wouldn't have got my body tore up for you. If you could do it like this, I wouldn't have provided it. Boy, it made me get out of it like a pit bull dog. See, I had to look at the cost of something. The value of it to determine my need and appreciation of it. I don't look at whether or not I need it. I look at it like I got to have it because he promised it and provided it. Right. You better let no devil steal me and talk me out of healing when it costs Jesus his life. Yeah. God his son. Glory. He had to watch him get beat, mm. whooped, spit on, persecuted, and mocked. To provide this healing for me. And I'm sitting up here trying to talk myself out of not getting it. And putting up with this stuff. <laughs> Man. That's a mockery to him. He said, Lee, say that with me. It's illegal for me to stay safe. It's illegal. Come on, say it again. It's illegal. It's illegal for me to stay broke. Declare it. 
Start this year off right. Take a position with the Lord against your adversary. Amen. The Lord want to finish the good work he began in you. He want a testimony and a praise report. He want to use you to say to others that he's the only true keeper. Oh, glory to God. And he want to use you as a reference point to them for what he'll do for them if they do what you did and believe him. So you're a showpiece for his increase this year. Mm. Shh, glory to God. I said you're a showpiece for his increase this year. You know, Sister Marlo, I was reading about science this week. Matter of fact, I had a, you know, me being in the education room, I studied too, you know. Even though I didn't graduate from high school, I still got to study. Because, you know, we, we run a school, you know. And, uh, and so, uh, so I studied on science this week. I had a mentor teaching me about science. And, you know, they talk about how laws, you know, laws that govern the earth. You know, that's what science is made of, of laws. So when you study science, you study laws, how, how, how things are ruled, how things work. And I got the revelation, I stopped the teacher. And she said, okay, Pastor Mike, let me finish before you start preaching. I'm going to let you preach. I said, well, go on and finish because I got, I got a revelation. And so she was teaching me, so, you know, about laws that govern plants, laws that govern the sun and, you know, light and all that. And I said, you know what? That, that, that there are three laws that suspend all other laws. I said, don't get rid of the laws, but it's suspended. And the reason why God implement these, these high laws to suspend natural laws, our laws that govern the earth, is so he can get his promises to you, so he can express his love to you. So he will suspend the laws that govern the earth, amen, just to get his promises to you. And I got to thinking about a law that he suspends with a high law just to get his promises to you. And it's in Romans chapter 8, verse, verse 1 and 2. And this is what he said. For there is no condemnation that is in Christ Jesus to those that are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit. So there's a law of the spirit. For the law of the Spirit of Christ that's in Christ Jesus has made me free for what? Oh, Woo! Yeah. So God can suspend the law of sin and death with the law that's in Christ Jesus. Yeah. And I said, Lord, what's the law of sin and death? He said, the law of sowing and reaping. You don't get to reap what you sow. Mm. When it's in opposition to me, he said, I suspend that law. Yeah. It don't work for you. Hallelujah. Well, some of you need to shout right now, all the wrong choices, bad decisions, and stuff. You, I got to shout right there. Woo! He said, the Lord doesn't reward you 
according to your iniquities. No, after your sin. What verse is that? Psalms 34, what? Verse 8? Is it verse 8? Watch this right here. He suspend this law. Now verse, where is that? Where is that? He doesn't reward you according to your transgressions, nor according to your sins. Is that verse 7, verse 9? What? Where's somewhere in that context right there? Amen. Find that for the Bible, man. Amen. He doesn't reward you according to your iniquity. Amen. See this law. This law. Y'all got that Bible, man? Amen. Glory to God. Let me find it. Psalms 34. Amen. Glory to God. Y'all look at this. Because this week the enemy going to try to pull the white man on you. And you got to remind me. Amen. Glory to God. That, that, that is a law in place. Woo, glory to God. <laughs> what verse is it? Verse what? Verse 10? 103 what? 103, 10 through 12. Y'all got it. <laughs> Watch this. Watch this. The Lord has not dealt with us. What? And y'all ain't going to get the shot?
See, it don't please him to bruise you. It please him to bring bruise Jesus. Put it up about me, Isaiah 53, verse, verse 8 through 10. Y'all, y'all gotta get an understanding of what, what this what this freedom costed y'all. Somebody had to pay for it. He was taken from prison and from judgment. He he was shut the class of generation. He was cut off from all the land of the dead. For what? The transgression of my people. He was stricken. Verse 9. And he made his grave with who? The wicked. And with the rich in his death. Because he'd done no violence. Neither was any deceit in his mouth. Verse 10. Yet it pleased the Lord to. So it don't please him to bruise you. Oh, God. But you got to believe in Jesus bruising. So you can be free from yours. So the devil, when he show up to bruise you, you say, I, Jesus put that on the cross. Jesus born that for me on the cross. Yeah, but what about what you said and did last week? It's under the blood. Yeah. I confess that and repent. I got back in Christ. I got back in the spirit. I got out of the flesh and got in the spirit. Now that law of sin and death don't work for me. The law of spirit and life that's in Christ is dealing with me. Yeah. Man. I said, man, you gotta work this word. Is anybody being helped with that? Somebody else is If you don't learn how to work this word, man, 2024 go run rough shot over there. I already showed you to every door of opportunity there is an adversary. And I showed you how to deal with it. Amen. Deal with it. Get him off your family. Get him off your business. Get him off your career. Get him off your money. Get him off your body. Back him off you. Amen. Make him leave you for a season. Amen. Make you, make you, you, you know, you ought to have days where you can't even think of a crime. Mm, mm. Woo! You ever had days like that? Where you couldn't even think of a crime? Yeah. Man, this is something, man. I mean, where the devil go? <laughs> All right, come on, let's finish. Don't forget about Thursday night Bible study online. Amen. Glory to God. We're, we're continuing online with our Thursday night Bible study. Amen. It's been picking up, man. People been calling us all around the world. Amen. Testifying of the word that they've been receiving. So make sure y'all tune in every Thursday night. Now set aside a, a private place in your home. Amen. Because we're at Bible study. Okay. All right. So set aside a private place in your home so we can have Bible study. Get your phone out, computer out, Bible, notepad, all that out. Amen. Glory to God. Bible study Thursday night, Word in Calvary Tuesday night, corporate prayer Monday through Friday. Amen. Glory to God. Well, it's been good. Somebody say, I'm, I'm exempt. I'm exempt. I'm immune. I'm from all loss. I'm no longer permitted. I'm no longer permitted. To lose nothing. To lose nothing. Jesus, Jesus is my redeemer. Is my redeemer. And he is increasing me. And he is increasing more. And more in 2024. In 2024, Jesus Christ is reversing the irreversible. Because there's nothing too hard for him. I believe in his love. I believe in his ability. And I believe in his willingness to keep me. To favor, me, to favor me and to increase me in Jesus' name. In Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Don't forget our, our scripture every day this week. Amen. Isaiah 41, verse 10. Feel that now because I'm going to let you know me. It's made I'm your God. I'm going to help you. I'm going to strengthen you. I'm going to uphold you with my righteous right hand. I want to appreciate all of you for coming. And go my brother from the wife, from the gym. Yay! Yeah. Hey, you right there. Amen. Amen. That's my brother right there. Amen. Hey, you know, 
It's such a blessing. Uh, what was your name again? Yeah. Now, Brother Nelson. Brother Nelson. Brother Nelson worked at the gym. And, hey, man, I was in there exercising. And Spirit of the Lord said, oh, man, introduce me to him. <laughs> and I went over there and introduced Jesus to him. He got born again. He got saved. Oh, and right there at the gym. Give him a right there at the gym, Brother Nelson. Right there at the gym. In front of everybody. The devil everybody. <laughs> hey, man. And then when me and him got through praying, it was two other people saw us praying. They came over and asked him to pray. Whew. Glory to God. And now Brother Nelson here with us today. Let's give him another hand. Glory to God. But I love you so much. We got a lot going on in the ministry. Don't forget to look at uh, your, your Facebook page. Don't forget to get your Bible reading mark for this week. Amen. Bookmark, the vision mark, all these printed materials. Amen. Well, it's always our prayer on the ministry's behalf that God's riches and grace.